G'day everybody, we are Amelia, Elizabeth and Harrison here for Twin Music Media and we are here with Gatto from Nana War of Steel. We want to say thank you for having this interview with us today. We are really big fans and your music is just incredible. Well, thanks a lot for having me, thanks a lot, thanks a lot for the interest in it. and especially thanks a lot for, to Harrison for supporting us on Patreon. So. <laughs> Oh, it's my pleasure. Like I said, yeah, I'm a big fan of the music. It's the perfect blend of metal and comedy, and it just makes sense. I would agree with you, but I'm biased, so it's... Um... <laughs> ah. so, but yeah, you're totally right. <laughs> so I did notice you interact with your fans. That's really cool. Yeah. Because there's not so many of them, so it's uh, it's manageable. Yeah, definitely. It's it, it's not a huge work to do. So, <laughs> so I'll ask a first question. So, how have fans responded to your new album, Italian Folk Metal? Well, of course, there's like um, you know, it's 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 basically an album that is it's, it's all in Italian uh, except for a couple of tracks which are not in, again they're not international so it was not an internationally meant uh, album we didn't expect anything from our fan, from our international fans and we expected like to I mean our goal was to become like the gods of metal in Italy and I think we're on the right path with this album because Italian fans are are loving the album and I, I guess it's um it's what they didn't know they wanted from us and <laughs> for most of them and I guess uh, that that's a nice feeling. But in, internationally, so it's I, I was surprised because I, we're getting very good reactions. Though most other people can't really understand the lyrics. I mean, maybe you can get the um, idea behind every um, song, but you don't really get you know the whole jokes and puns and references. It's uh, the context. It's it's pretty important for most of them. But uh, we are we're having a very good response also internationally. So I think it's um, we're very very happy with the way it's going. And you mentioned that the idea was to be the gods of metal in Italy. Can you tell us about the inspiration behind this album? So the, the idea of this album is, as we stated um, many times, it's like uh, when people talk about folk metal, they usually talk about um, like some kind of Irish, Scottish thing, like with the violins and bagpipes. And that's the, you know, when you talk about folk metal, then you talk, you, you think about this brand of metal, which is, is part of the music, uh, which is in our Italian folk metal as well. But, um, the idea of folk is like the, the, the root of the word is like, it means popular. It's like something that is, uh, popularly listened to. It's, it's something that is traditional in a way. And so we wanted to make, to merge these two things of folk metal and make it like traditional in Italian sense of tradition, in sense of the, um, Italian traditional music. And so we got some, um, different styles of Italian music from like the last hundred years um, and we merged them with metal and it's, uh, it's the case for example in the, um, there's this uh, La Marcia su Piazza Grande is like um, it's a song which is in the style of the 20s military marches and then there's uh, there are songs that are taken from other regions like Sulla Alico della Libertà which is the last track on the album before the bonus tracks and um, that's a song for example that has very a typical uh, style, um, it's called Pizzica, from, it, it takes from this Pizzica, which is a very traditional style in southern Italy, in Puglia, and it's mixed with metal. And so that, that's the idea, I guess. Uh, it's, a, it's to blend like traditional Italian topics. Also, ev everything is done in a like non serious way, of course, but uh, like we talk about politics, football, food, it's like the typical Italian uh, speech. I don't know. The, Typical Italian conversation is, is upon this topic. So, and just quickly to touch on the topic of football, uh, how do you feel about the recent Euro match? Um, very happy. Uh, I don't know. I was a little bit tired yesterday. I mean, it's a very, it's been a very uh, stressful uh, bunch of days. We we had a release show on a few days ago on, on Thursday, so it was like three days before the match. And there was a huge stress, like coming back on stage after so much time with the organization and, uh, you know, taking care of all the aspects. And for that show, we wanted to uh, make something special because we know it's, it's, it was going to be a social distance show. And then we, we got some guests. We had to make sure that people were coming and we had like some of the dancers on, of Norwegian reggaeton. They were with us dancing on Norwegian reggaeton and the, the female actress that joined us for the, um, in the, in the most recent video of Polenta Taranyarok, she was also there. We had other friends coming, and so 
we had Maurizio Merluzzo also on stage from the um, that sang with us. The, um, anyway, so that's just to say that we had a lot of things to manage, and I, I mean, I enjoyed myself, but uh, and we are very happy, of course. But um, <laughs> I was too tired to 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 go and party. I, I just joined until two a.m. and then I, I moved back home. But um, it's a very nice feeling. That's exciting that you finally get to play after so long because of COVID as well. Yeah, it was exciting, but again, for me, it was more the uh, the stress of the organization and stuff. Yeah, there were many things to be taken care of, uh, you know, the merchandise and all the staff, and then it's uh, I, I was stressed for that, uh, to be honest. I, I like when I st- I put my foot on stage, then I like forgot about everything and enjoyed myself, and it was great. But uh, before that, it was more the uh, the stress and the excitement for being back after one year and a half of stop uh, because of um, COVID regulations. What was your writing and recording process on your new album? Uh, the writing, uh, we, we, we did most of the writing through the first lockdown. It was a very harsh lockdown for a couple of months in, that took place in Italy. I wasn't in Italy at the time, but then we just met over Skype and, you know, we had we, we knew actually, so the idea of making an, um, an album completely in Italian was something that we had in mind since before signing to Napalm. So when we signed to Napalm, we told them, look, we have this project, we want to do this because, you know, we, we sort of want to set a mark in Italian rock and metal music. We want to do some an album that is with this concept behind. And we know it's something that people outside of Italy will, will find hard to understand lyrically and also you know the, the, the music style as i said there's a lot of references so so most of the ideas were already there before actually writing the album we just needed to sort of um, make them a more concrete like to give some body to, to ideas that we had uh, were floating around since a couple of uh, years already you know we spent this few months during lockdown writing songs and then at some point um, I don't know if you know, but uh, the Polenta da Ragnarok, the last single that we released, was actually written with the fans. So uh, uh, a few years ago, we had this, uh, was called uh, the Turmentone process. So it was basically, we were asking, we were making polls online, asking our fans uh, to vote for the title of a new song. Then we would write the song in two weeks, and then the next shows, we, you know, we would play that. And it was the whole summer fest, it was a summer tour that we did this. And so we were eventually, like all of these, all of the songs that we wrote this way, they were literally voted and like wrote, written in, in one week or two weeks. Then we, we made an EP out of this. And so we repeated the process with this song and then we had the fans voting for the title, song title. And then we had them writing the song with us. I mean, we streamed the whole process of uh, songwriting for three hours. Uh, it was March, uh, April, maybe uh, 2020. We had the, we had the fans writing the song with us, like giving us ideas, and you know we they were, we were getting feedback from them whether they liked some you know words or not. Now we had an idea of the music, so we already had some melody in mind. We presented the melody to our fans, and then they you know we it was very cool. We had a lot of interaction with that, so that's a very cool way of writing a song. That's the way we, we wrote the rest of the album in the usual way. How did you come up with the album cover, and is there a meaning behind it? Oh, sure. So like pretty much every album cover we do, we will try to link it to the content of the album. So we put references to the songs. And by the way, the the, um, the album cover, again, like every album cover we did so far, was drawn by our, um, our singer. So our singer is an illustrator, is an artist, a visual artist, and does that, you know, it's, it's like he draws comics um, and uh, storyboards. It's like that's his cup of tea. So it's his full-time job is basically that this is a professional of uh, illustration. So that's, he did that. But as, again, as, um, as you might see, like there's, um, there's a lot of items on the, on the, <laughs> on the cover and each one of them. So there's a robot, which is of course, uh, linked to Gabon Zorbo, which is one of the songs on the album. There's this, uh, Garibaldi like, I mean, Garibaldi is, is like Italy's national hero. Um, and so is, there's um, our how would you say our mascots like the, the this dwarf this nano is dressed in a Garibaldi like way and then you got a few there's there's a lot of references there's a volcano behind with some polenta going out which is again it's a it's a uh, reference to Polenta Taranyrok the latest single released 
I didn't even realize um, that was a reference to Polenta Taraglodok. That's really, really good. <laughs> yeah, because you see, this, so in the, in the song it says there's Dalle uh, Fauci del Vulcano di Trepalle. So it says there's, um, the Polenta is erupting from the volcano of Trepalle. Trepalle is a, is a uh, village um, which is in the area where Polenta Ragnarok is made. And there's a mountain, and we just say it's a volcano erupting uh, Polenta. And so that's the vulca uh, volcano which erupts Polenta. And then you got some ships there. There it's a, you know, it's a reference to Capitan Findus. There are roses. There's money. Basically, every everything on on, on the cover is uh, is album related. It's related to some song. So you, you can see here there's the tower of from the Lord of the Rings with the football, um, you know, with the ball in, instead of Sauron's eye. And that's a reference for um, Il Signore degli Anelli dello Stadio, which is the song that got played the most in these days, of course, because of Euro. In Italy, I think it's... Uh, we, when we played the concert, it was the most successful song I think we ever played. I mean, if only people could stand up and... Uh, it was such a great response, because that song on the album, if I may open, like, if I may talk about that, it, now I'm making a small detour, but... Uh, uh, it's track number nine of the uh, Italian folk metal, and it's like a mixture uh, of uh, football choirs. It's like football chants that people would go in the stadium and sing. And usually, I think it's the same thing everywhere. Like the people would just, you know, have offensive um, chants against some other cities and some other, uh, you know, people from that region, people from that city and, and that team and so on and so forth. So we replaced every reference therein, like every reference to Milan, to Juventus, to Naples, with a Lord of the Ring reference. So the song is basically football chant, but now it's it's saying instead of Naples sucks, it's like Saruman sucks. <laughs> and there's a, and the, the whole song is like that. And it's, I mean, in, in Italian it works so, you know, because people are used to seeing like Naples is shit, and so it's like uh, Hobbits are shit. And that's the, um, when we played in Rome, actually, the, the, so we released the song with the album. Well, it was not one of the singles that we released before the album. And this song was um, out for five days, I guess. Um, and then we played the, the show in Rome, and there were people with uh, uh, with signs, with lyrics taken from the songs, like signs, like in the stadium. It's like um, it was crazy. So we're, the people completely went crazy for this one. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there's this line. It says Bilbo, Bilbo Baggins Carabiniere. So Carabiniere are like policemen, and so in the stadium, of course, you you, you know you you sing against policemen <laughs> all the time. It's, it's like against security forces, and so this is like Bilbo Baggins Carabiniere is like one of the. It's, it's like Bilbo Baggins is a policeman. It's like. <laughs> Usually they would sing this for you know the other for the other teams members. They say, oh, they are with the police. We are against the police. Well, uh, I'm not war sure it, it's clear, but yeah. Sorry, no, I was going to say Nana War is known for your comedy. Your slogan is "We take comedy seriously." Uh, yeah. And earlier this year, you the whole band made a massive online change from metal to pop, and then you later released that that was a huge prank on your fans yeah. and it was very well received what was the idea behind this prank how did it come to be all right um do you want a serious version of that <laughs> no um, <laughs> no do you want a real story the funny version. <laughs> oh the funny version is that we like to make to make fun of everyone and we we are we we, we wanted to um I don't know. I cannot come up with a funny story for that story, but <laughs> <laughs> I'll just uh, I'll just stick to the boring thing. No, the the, the the idea is that we were writing these Italian style songs. As I said, that there's a lot of Italian, uh, typical Italian uh, musical references in the album, and so among those songs, we also recorded these two pop songs. And but we listened to the album, and we, we couldn't really, you know, I was listening to it, and I didn't. I see. I, I we couldn't see them fit. In this album like they didn't really fit like with, with the music style and so it said we just said okay let's just release them separately and you know let's just make people believe we we turn into pop and let's see what happens and we thought well no one is gonna believe this prank it's like it's so obvious that it's a prank because what the fuck i mean first of all we are nano or steel so that <laughs> what, what else would you expect from us like whatever we do you shouldn't take us seriously like don't take us seriously i mean if you do then you you, you have some serious problems but um 
And then we got some very angry response. I mean, it was uh, people were, were really taking this seriously, and then we had a lot of comments be with people saying, "Oh, I understand your choice. I'm so sorry. I think <laughs> it's the end of our journey together. I will stop listening to you if you do this to me, because I loved you because you were a metal." But we got so you know hundreds of messages. We, I was just you know the first days we we, we released this statement. <laughs> I was just screenshotting comments all the time and I was laughing my, my ass off. I was so, you know, the more people were upset and then disappointed, I was just laughing. So I couldn't believe it. I was laughing so hard at the time. So. And I remember that you guys weren't taking it seriously either. I was there when you did the YouTube premieres of the song and a lot of your comments to the fans were blatantly comedic. And the fact that the fans didn't pick up on that is ridiculous. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, but I was, again, I was surprised by how many people really believe this. And I mean, we made it believable because we, if you remember, we released this teaser with some songs on, on, on top of that was his answer, Unprotected Love. I don't know. There were a lot of, I'm you know, like pop song. song. <laughs> but the funniest thing about that, now I'll tell you, that this is a very interesting behind the scenes because uh, at some point, so we said, okay, let's record this pop. Let's record these pop videos. We are doing this in December, and then we said, okay, we release the pop videos and make everyone believe it's there's a pop album coming. Um, um, you know, it, it's coming. And then we said, but uh, okay, but we should, we really need to make this believable. So let's make a teaser with a bunch of pop songs, and then we we afterwards we we release the videos one after the other of these pop songs that are featured in this teaser. So people at first will think, oh, it's it's a joke. It's just a teaser. And then there's a first video, and as well, it's just a teaser and a video. And then by the time there's a second video coming out, you know, people will have to believe it. I mean, <laughs> or, you know, they will really start asking themselves, well, what the fuck is going on in here? And the teaser was literally recorded, I think, in maybe half an hour, one hour. I had a talk over the telephone with with a guitar player and said, you really need to make a teaser. And he said, okay, how, how should it sound? I, I said, oh, well, it's like Papa, so make one song like Oasis, make another one like Dance, and then we'll put a bunch of songs that are actually going out, that are going to be released, and say, okay, okay, no worries, I'll do it. And like, in one hour we had, this teaser was already released, <laughs> was already recorded. It was So actually, Unprotected Love doesn't exist. <laughs> yes, everything you can hear is like, there already. So if you could have any band perform one of your songs, which band would it be? Which song would it be? And would it be in your style or their style? I, I would say it's Blind Guardian maybe playing the Quest for Carrefour or Carcanior song, which are two songs that are made in Blind Guardian style. And so that would be, yeah, I would say that for the release songs. In the past, you've worked with artists like... Glory Hammer and Michael Starr from Steel Panther. Who did you have guest starring on this new album? So this new album, we, we of course we we had mainly Italian. Uh, I mean, we only had Italian metal artists. So we had uh, Francesco Paoli from Fresh Code Apocalypse, which are to me uh, like Italians. Maybe it's 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 the best Italian band at the moment in the metal scene, hands down. Um, and so it was really a pleasure to have him on, on, on the album, and he's a really cool guy, he was very friendly. Then we had Alessandro Conti, who is a friend of ours. We've shared the stage a bunch of times with uh, when he was playing with his band at Trick or Treat. He's also the um, singer for um, Luca Torelli's um, Rhapsody. And then he has a bunch of other projects I cannot remember, I'm sorry. But um, he's very, I mean, he's one of, again, one of the top Italian metal singers. And so it was a honor to have him. We had um, Jada, Jade from Frozen Crown, um, which is, um, I mean, it's an emerging, but it's already pretty well established. It's a power metal band. Um, Ian, and so she was also very friendly and, and nice. And uh, she had a lot of fun recording the, uh, the tracks for, the, for that song, for Rosario. Then we had uh, The Rampled which is a folk, like um, in, in the traditional sense. So it's a folk uh, rock band from Northern Italy and they helped us with a lot of the, uh, lots of the weird instruments <laughs> uh, with the accordion. Um, and then we had someone from, uh, we had Maurizio from Folkstone. I'm not sure you know Folkstone, but they are, 
they were, I mean, they disbanded, like they split um, a couple of years ago and they were maybe t- the, the most, um, I mean, maybe number one uh, Italian band singing in Italian, so to say. It's, it was a very, they were very, very popular here until they were active, of course. And uh, I think I'm not missing out on anyone. Uh, well, we had Giorgio Mastrot, of course, <laughs> which I'm not sure you know who the, the guy is, but uh, he's not a chef. He's, he's like a TV salesman, so he's selling stuff in, on television. Since So he was an anchorman in the 90s, and he was also, because he was a model, he was voted like Italy's most beautiful man in the 90s, and then he was a soul. I mean, it was national TV all the time some program I, I don't remember, even remember the, the the actual content but you know like this um, summer programs with some music some dance and this kind of entertainment very low level entertainment I would say and the guy then turned into the most famous uh, salesman in Italy basically he's like the most famous face uh, you, you can switch on Italian television anytime you would see his face trying to sell you some pots some mattresses some bicycles, some TV, whatever. It's like every if you want to sell something in Italy, then you you, you know every firm gets his his uh, his face on the product, so his endorsement. And it's fun because we this guy and we we, we released the song about Giorgio Mastrota like ten years ago, and it's it's our first viral hit. It turned like a viral hit in Italy, and it was about Giorgio Mastrota, who is the um, keeper of stainless steel because he was selling stainless steel pots all the time. So he was very famous for selling these stainless steel pots. And so he says, well, this guy is, is definitely like the king of metal. It's like the keeper of stainless steel. He's the... And so we made this song about him. And eventually, like, he, he listened to the song and then uh, we got in contact with him. We got very good sort of, fr- I mean, we, I would say we're friends now. He's a very, he's like the coolest guy ever. We would never, ever, ever expected something like that because we're making, we're making fun in, of him in a very um, polite way, so to say. We're not really insulting, but we're making fun of him nonetheless. And he took it, he, he liked the song so much. And then we had this project of doing something together. And then he jumped into the uh, Polenta Taranya rock song. Because he actually lives, now it turns out he lives in the region where this polenta is made. And he has his own shop where he sells this brand of polenta. Because he's, he's you know, he's a seller, so it's, he has his own, like, um, that, that's something he needs to do. So he's, he's, he's selling also in his own shop, he has his own shop that, that, that does this. And so we said, oh, why, why don't we produce this polenta together? So we're actually pr- producing polenta, the food, together with this. Uh, he made a spot for us, like a video promotion, uh, a short commercial for the <laughs> for the polenta. And so I guess, I mean, the, he he's the top guest on this album ever. And though I, I guess it's something that, you know, foreigners cannot really appreciate how cool is that because you're not used to switching on television and seeing this guy trying to sell you some pots. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> uh, but then if you, if you I mean, it, it, for, us, for us, it's very hard to realize that this guy sing with us like about selling polenta, <laughs> Viking polenta. It's, it's something completely crazy for, for us. It's like, I don't know, it's a lifetime achievement. We have to come and try your polenta sometime. Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, if you come to Australia, we'll try to. I don't know if you. I remember you had this uh, kind of very strict regulation about food that you can import, but <laughs> that's one of the things that deterred me from buying some of the polenta when I. Uh, yeah. I was thinking, can I get this through customs? That would be. I, I'm not sure because it, it's dried food, so it's it's like flour. Mm, so I'm not sure. It's. Uh, so, um, what's your favorite memory watching someone else perform live? Can you tell us a story? <laughs> I can't. <laughs> I mean, the, the favorite ones, they're really for an inner circle of uh, close friends that, you know, we, we can tell them, but we cannot, make, we cannot really make these things public. Okay. Um, <laughs> I can tell you, like, maybe the third ranking one. Or... <laughs> okay. No, usually it's um, uh, like a single story. I don't know, like for on on stage, like, um, for us, like the best memory we have, um, it's when we had Giorgio Mastrota coming to play with us on a show in Italy. As I was telling you, like um, he's again for us, it was 
he's still a, a, like a TV star. So it's, you, you would never expect to see this guy live. It's when you see him live after 20, 30 years of seeing him on television, then it's a, there's a, it's a very weird uh, feeling. But then this, so w- what we did is that we had him on stage, but we didn't tell anyone. And we were playing a large festival, like 7,000 people. Nice. So that that I was think I, I think it was the best the best part because we had um, this song about it's called Federalism and Libertà it's, it's Federalism and Freedom and that's usually like our last song or oh, the song before the last or something like that that we play and that's about the emperor it's like about bringing back the emperor to Europe unifying Europe under a single flag of uh, you know and uh, up with the black plague and you know, all these kind of medieval themed things that are there and so. On that song, we had someone on stage who was sitting on a throne with a helm on top. So it was face was covered for during the whole song. And people, you know, they were asking themselves, so, who the fuck is this guy? And then right after the song, we started playing Giorgio Masada and he threw out his helm. And uh, like, you know, we, we could see people couldn't believe it. Like there were 7,000 people there who started screaming like, like crazy. That, that's a video of that you, you will hear. I don't know. It, it's just, it's some kind of screams I've never heard before. And I remember that was like the top, well, the best moment we ever had on stage. <laughs> we ever had live. It's like with the, with, he was singing with us. He was jumping with us. Like, and he was he, he was saying that seriously in the in the um, well, singing with us. He said, "Oh, this is the best moment of my life. Like my life is boring. I just sell pots, I sell mattresses, and it's uh, I sell bicycles. But this is fun. It's it's great." And so. <laughs> and um, last question: Is there anything else you would like to say to your fans? First of all, thanks for uh, being our fans. I think it's uh, it's very uncommon these days. I hope it will be less uncommon in the future. I don't know. I mean, just listen to our music on Spotify. Don't be disappointed. First thing is, I mean, the most important thing actually I should say is that um, I, I've heard this. Uh, there's also people that are disappointed by the fact that we are publishing something in Italian only, and so there's we're sort of losing grip on the, on the international audience. But um, don't be afraid because the next next album we got something cooking. I mean, I cannot tell you anything about that because it's but the, the just something that's gonna blow your mind. If we manage to do that, what we have in mind, if even if we manage to do one third of what we have in mind, it's going to be massive. So <laughs> just be prepared for it. And you know, if you do, if you don't like Italian songs, then just wait for it. Go and listen to our old discography, and then wait for the next album because it's going to be something massive. Well, I would just like to say, on behalf of Twin Musics and your international audience, thank you so much for this interview today. This is. Probably by far one of the funniest interviews we've ever done. Oh, seriously. <laughs> yes. I was more, it was one of the most serious interviews I've ever done, to oh, be honest. Oh, sorry. But, <laughs> <laughs> not because of you, because of me, because usually when, when you know, uh, it depends on the mood, maybe because it's now, it's, it's two and, uh, you know, it's just right after lunch, I'm a little bit, um, um, I don't know, I didn't, I didn't get any beer so far, so I was, <laughs> I'm still in a, like, normal mood. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not as creative, so the, the, the blame is on me, but um, okay. no, thanks a lot for having me.